Welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays the Confection in Tallahassee, Florida, where we make hard candy. We recently got a new set of drop rollers. Well, new for us. They're from the 1880s or 1890s of a heart within a heart, and we thought this would be perfect to make candy for Valentine's Day. And while we get ready to make candy, let's wonder about the terms of St. Valentine's Day. Like why we wear a heart on our sleeve, and why are there really probably more than one St. Valentine? The candy today is going to be flavored with cherries and cream. Flavors are wonderful touchstones of memories. And this is a flavor combination that I associate with meeting my wife. And because of that inspiration, this will be a series of candies that will be in cream flavor. Strawberry and cream, peaches and cream. There will be about seven flavors in total. And I want them all to look like individually different colored jewels. Because that's what I want to give to my wife for Valentine's Day. And perhaps you'll enjoy it too. The hot sugar that Jake has already poured on the candy cooling table already has the flavor and color in it. Now all he has to do is add the citric acid. Because if we don't balance the flavor, it's not going to taste like a real fruit. And that's what this white powder is. Citric acid. So as Jake flips the candy and equalizes the temperature, let's think about the phrase, wearing a heart on your sleeve. It's very strange and it's a cool idiom. But where did it come from? It entered the English lexicon as a common phrase thanks to Othello. And I'm talking about the Shakespearean play, not the black and white flip tile game. But I'll wear my heart upon my sleeve for dolls to peck at. I am not what I am. But Shakespeare only takes us back to the 1600s. The phrase goes back much further than that. And I investigated this because I was trying to figure out why do you wear your heart in your sleeve? Why not wear it on a pants leg or on a brooch or anywhere else in particular? And the answer is, back in the Roman times, people actually wore their heart in their sleeves, and it was tied in to Valentine's Day and St. Valentine himself. I'm not 100% sure, but this may be the only Valentine's Day tradition, which is actually tied back to the story of St. Valentine. It all goes back to a decision from a Roman emperor, Claudius II Gothicus. He was a third century Roman emperor, he felt that unmarried soldiers made better soldiers, so he forbid marriage in his troops. And because of this, the soldiers weren't always happy, but he did have a festival once a year where they'd be paired up with somebody to spend the day with, and that woman's name would be selected out of a hat, basically. The soldier would pin the name of the lady he was paired with to his sleeve. The ladies would walk around and find the soldier with their name pinned on the sleeve and spend the day with him. And this was wearing your heart on your sleeve. But it was the ban of marriage that Emperor Claudius did that was the real problem, and it led to Valentine's Day itself. Jake is feeding the hot candy through our drop roller. This drop roller is over 150 years old, and it's kind of unique to us. We just got it from a collection we acquired, and this is actually the first batch we've ever run on it. If you want to get some of this candy for yourself, please just go to www.pd.net and you can buy it online or you can come by Lofty Pursuits in person and get it. One of the problems with Valentine's Day and researching it is Valatius actually means brave, worthy, strong, powerful in Latin. It was a common nickname through the 8th century, so there's a lot of martyrs named Valentine. But one of the ones most associated with Valentine's Day and being St. Valentine was a gentleman who married these soldiers against the orders of the Emperor. And he was arrested and put to death for this. But while he was awaiting his execution or martyrdom that made him a saint, because I guess saints like irony, he had cured a lady of blindness and this lady was the daughter of the jailer who was keeping him. And he corresponded with her and he signed his letter from your valentine. If the legend is right, this is why we sign our Valentine's Day that way and refer to ourselves as Valentines. Mind you, there was another Christian martyr named Valentine that lived in the same time period and several others shortly after. Heck, there was even a Pope Valentine that we know almost nothing about who only served for 40 days. He died early after he was elected to be Pope. So the church itself assumes that this history is muddled and has made Saint Valentine sort of an unofficial saint that's still on the saint rolls. I just love finding connections, and I love that these two events have the same origin, Claudius's decree, and that we know it because of Shakespeare. All that's left to do is for Jake to drop them and break them apart, showing you why these are called drops.
Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to us here on YouTube and ring the alerts bell. If you want to try this candy for yourself, you can get it at our website, www.pd.net. We ship worldwide. This is going to be a seven flavor fruit and cream assortment, and we're going to end up with three different varieties for Valentine's Day. We're going to do this, we're going to do a bouquet of our crystal rose candies, and we're going to do conversation candies again that have sayings in it and hearts and pictures. So if you're interested, check our website. They'll be going up over the next couple of days. You can always follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or listen to our podcast, which you can get wherever podcasts are downloaded. You can even get it off our website, www.pd.net. And we'd love to see you in Tallahassee. You can visit us in person. We're right off I-10 in the Thomasville Road exit. Thank you again for watching.